you take one inch off that property line. It does, it's not going to affect his property, right? One little inch when you build your new fence. But I guarantee you, your neighbor is going to be really angry because you've done that. And that's why, like Robert Frost, although he didn't really intend this, said good, good, good uh, fences make good neighbors. I mean, he was using that ironically because of the, what that poem is really about is there's something in nature that doesn't love a fence, you know, that fences are also problems because we build fences to keep others out. And sometimes fences should have at least doors, gates, where it's open, and, and if we respect them, at least that door is always open. So in the Islamic tradition, generosity is related to courage. And what's interesting is courage is a virtue that is predicated on, on being informed by two other virtues. And if those two virtues are not there, you, 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 you can't be courageous. And those two virtues are justice and, and wisdom, prudence. And that's why a plan of generosity is actually a courageous plan, but it's also a just plan, and it's a prudent plan. So it really is something that if we think about it at a deeper level, we'll recognize this is the right thing to do. Prudence necessitates it. One of the traditions about the Prophet Muhammad, and, and I would really recommend because he, I believe, is one of the most defamed people in the West. Um, people uh, a billion point something revere and love the Prophet Muhammad. He's w worth learning about in the same way Buddha is worth learning about. I mean, when people, millions of people look to a figure uh, as a source of, of guidance, it's, it's just a, a wise thing to know something about those people, <laughs> really, because it just, it helps you, you know, to, to know something about Moses, about Jesus, about Muhammad, about Buddha, about Lord Krishna, all of these traditions help us understand each other better. And, and one of the things that really is so striking about studying comparative religion, which is what my degree was in, is that the, the more you learn about these religions, I have found, the more you come to respect them. That, that denigrating the religions, and, and I've, 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 I've been in my share of exclusivist uh, tradition, because I, when I first became Muslim, that, that is the type of Islam that I was introduced to. So I've been through my share, so I know how it is to look through the exclusivist eyes. It's, it's very easy to do. It makes the world very simple. All the grays are removed. Black and white are easy colors to negotiate. Um, so it's, it's very easy, but when you begin to look at the nuances of our traditions, what you really find is that they're, they're, they're deeply uh, compatible at those m most basic fundamental levels because they are teaching universal truths and they would not resonate in the millions of hearts that they resonate in if that was not true. Um, cults do not last. They, they don't. They die out. Um, you have cults and you have cults within universalist traditions. There's no doubt about that. There are cults within Christianity, within Islam, within Judaism, within Hinduism. You will have that cultic phenomenon because it's part of the human condition. But the, the essential truths are universal truths that ring true for millions of people. The Prophet Muhammad said human hearts were made to incline to love those who do good to them. That is a statement about human nature, that human hearts incline. Hearts are made to love those who do good to them. And I have traveled all over the world. I've lived in the poorest countries on the earth. I lived in, in Mauritania. I lived with Bedouin in the Sahara. And what I've noted is if you treat people with dignity, they tend to reciprocate. I have rarely found that principle to be uh, not true. Every once in a while you meet people that just, they've, they've got a problem and you're not the problem, you just happen to be the object of the problem at the time. But there are people out there like that and, and you're gonna find them. But, but being, the honoring people, and the word in Arabic for generosity, there are actually several words. The Arabs are very generous people, even with giving the word generosity different words. Um, the, the Arabs, one of the words that they use, and the most important one, is called karam. And the word karam, the root of it, karamat, means to be honored. 
And karama, which is human dignity, is the same word for generosity. So honoring people is being generous to people. And when you're generous to people, you're honoring them. In, in the Islamic tradition, 2.5% of your wealth, your standing wealth, not income tax. Uh, income tax was actually considered in the Islamic tradition to be oppressive. But the, um, the, the, there is a, a capital tax of your wealth every year, which is your standing wealth that one entire year has passed over and that wealth was there. You, you're, you're obligated to give to the poor 2.5% of that wealth, every Muslim. Farmers and pastoral people are obligated to give 10 to 5%, depending on their circumstances, of their agriculture and their livestock to poor people. Now, the reason for that, according to the uh, Islamic sages who commented on the Quran, was in order to remove resentment from the hearts of people. Because wealthy people get wealthy off the backs of poor people. And if you do not give back, it creates resentment. And in creating resentment, you create social instability. And so it's actually in the best interest of the wealthy people. This is prudence. It is in the best interest of the wealthy people to give back to those communities. And this is one of the problems, and I really hate this about, um, there's a whole slew, of, there's a book out right now about being the power of being nice. And it's all about, if you're nice, you're going to make more money. You know, I, I really, I, I'm so troubled by that philosophy, by that mentality, because I don't want to be nice for an ulterior motive. I want to be nice because that is what it means to be human. That, that part of humanity is just being good to other people. And, and that is the majority of people. If you walk around, the majority of the people, you ask them for time, they'll look at their watch. And they'll give you the time. That's, that's an act of kindness. You know, I, I was at a gas station, I ran, I didn't have my wallet, I ran out of gas, I went in and I asked a man, uh, can you uh, loan me, I'll bring the two dollars back, I just need two dollars to get, and he gave me the two dollars from his own pocket, he's working behind the, the thing. That was it. He could have said, no, I can't do that, and, and that's happened to me before. I mean, I went to a bank the other day at, to ask for change for 20, I'm sorry, are you a customer here? I said, no, and she said, well, we can't unless you're a customer. I said, well, gee, I you know, won't think about becoming a customer, will I, with that kind of attitude? You know, so I left the bank, 